Paul Zara. Thank you for joining us. Sure. And it's starting to look a lot like Christmas here. It certainly is. There's a lot of people around today, so I'm really pleased to see. Now, what are your expectations for Christmas sales? Look, we, we still remain fairly conservative in our outlook. Uh, there's no doubt consumer sentiment's at an all-time low. Uh, it, Commonwealth Bank has actually stated it's the worst sales environment for 50 years, and we're very conscious about that. We posted our first quarter results, so we're negative 11, so we had a very tough trading period. But what's been pleasing in the, in the last sort of weeks of um, through October and into November, we've seen a much improved tracking rate. Okay, now interest rates, of course, have come down, but perhaps not as much as the RBA was uh, initially marking. How much of a difference does that make to the impact on consumer sentiment? It has a significant impact on consumer sentiment. So in fact, all those, that's a real positive sign from a consumer's point of view to maybe loosen their wallets a little bit more and not so be concerned about what's happening globally. Now, one thing you've had to do during a period of more flat sales has been to cut your costs. How much more can you do of that? Because you obviously have a lot of frontline staff You've had a lot of cost out there, but on the other hand, if you do that too much, then it's going to end up hurting your sales. Of course. Well, in fact, we, we made a concerted effort for this, the, this, for this quarter going into the all-important Christmas trade and to increase our staffing hours. And we've, we've actually got more hours on the shop floor this year versus last year. We, we certainly understand across the company that this is the most important trading period, from going from that all-important Christmas trading into our clearance trading period. So, I want to be satisfied we've maximised every single opportunity in our stores. So aside from the Christmas period where you obviously need to ramp up your staff, what is your cost reduction strategy for staff after that? Well we've taken costs out from our other parts of the organisation to make sure we've funded the staffing hours on the floor to, to maximise sales across the business. But how much more of those costs can you cut? How much more room is there? Oh, look, we'll always be focused on cost. It's actually been certainly one of the uh, core competencies of the organisation. In fact, there is a lot of cost in back of house type um, uh, parts of our business that we're really focused to make sure we remove all that bureaucracy administration. That's where most of the costs actually sit. Okay, now of course something that always comes up, here's a great way to save costs, just put everything online. So tell us about uh, how has the online impact been on your business now that we've seen the Aussie dollar cool off just a little bit? Sure. Look, the online business is certainly a, a significant issue for traditional retailers, particularly in Australia. Mm -hmm. However, a, a massive opportunity. So, I've, you know, the world is becoming certainly much smaller and I've looked to the international market to get my inspiration and that's actually the Nordstrom department store in the US. They're doing a billion dollars worth of their sales online. 20% of their EBIT comes from their online business. So it gives you a sense of um, where the opportunity actually exists for David Jones. You're clearly a big fan of Nordstrom, but Mark McInnes says that it's not fair to compare David Jones to Nordstrom back when he made the decision to cut that online business. Do you think in hindsight that it was reasonable, considering the business was losing 28 million a year, to cut it and then bring it back later? Oh, absolutely. Look, the world is changing, there's no doubt. I mean, the, the, the retail business is much different today than it was six months ago, 12 months ago, or 10 years ago, for that matter. Um, and having the online arm to our business, the multi-channel facet of our business, makes us relevant and allows customers to shop with us when and choose when they choose and, and how they want, wish to, to interact with us. So it's an important part of our strategy. So you're still happy to quote the Nordstrom example? Absolutely. They are the best practice leaders in this, this, this field. We have regular contact and dialogue with them. We are learning from them. We don't want to make the mistakes of the past and certainly lose money as we've done previously. You know, that we're, by being you know, almost the last retailer, certainly from an Australian perspective, um, whilst we do have a web shop, it's doing very, very well. Um, it's a very clunky system, it's, not, it's a legacy IT system. Our investment in technology moving forward will allow us to actually compete at the international best practice that we're looking for. Speaking of Mark McInnes, you've always been careful not to directly criticise him. He, on the other hand, has said that you are rewriting history in terms of who's to blame for some of the mistakes of David Jones' past. Is it disappointing for you to see that he has become personal? Look, it's disappointing, however, you know, I've got a, a big job, um, I've got many headwinds facing me, there's a lot of challenges from a retail point of view, certainly a lot of challenges specific to David Jones and I'm fully focused on the business, I am not looking for any other distractions. Mark McInnes has also criticised you because of the loss of senior staff from David Jones that he says has directly affected your ability to predict sales and therefore left you with a whole lot of infantry. Does he have a point? Is it harder now for you than it was before to get your sales predictions right? 
It's simply untrue. Uh, look, it, there's no doubt this is unprecedented, uncharted territory for us, uh, for, the, for the retail industry, certainly for David Jones. Um, we, 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 if I think back at the last quarter, we, we, our, in the Q4 we're at negative 10. We had days we're up to minus 23, unprecedented in our history. Like, you just cannot plan for that. We were caught with some inventory. We've got great plans in place to um, clear that excess inventory and all of our plans are on track. Um, as for the comments, so that's by winter of 20. Absolutely. Look, and I'm here to talk about about what we're doing for Christmas. But you know, if you if we will make sure within the fiscal 12 area we're back on track. It's tough trading, and we're still navigating our way through. You know, the the additional um, headwind that we're now facing is that it's the it's the coldest. Uh, coolest summer they're saying on uh, the Bureau of Meteorology is saying on in 50 years. So if you think about what I've had to deal with in the last 12, 18 months, it's certainly everything that's possibly could be thrown at a retailer and a new CEO. People leaving the organisation, we have 10,000 employees, 650 of those employees work in our head office. Um, you know, since my appointment, we've I've particularly focused on reducing labour turnover, generally from a retention point of view, because it's a cost to the business. Um, and I, what I can pleasingly say is that we've had a 30% reduction in our overall turnover, labour turnover. So we're pleased with our results. I think people leaving an organisation are often good for the individual, good for the organisation, and, you know, and these things happen. You know, we've had nine executives leave in the last 18 months, that's normal business. So, Since the scandal, do you think the David Jones reputation is now finally back to where it was before that? Look, I, we, I've been very focused on the future and I've really tried to leave the history behind. Um, I did give a candid interview to the AFR boss and that was actually talking about where the company is at. Um, um, and you know, we've got lots of challenges and I'm focused on the future. And for next year we'll, we'll launch our multi-channel platform, we'll have a new point of sale system, you know, that's been replaced with the system that we have today is 17 years old, most of the buttons are missing. You know, we still have a very successful business, a great brand, I'm surrounded by talented people, an outstanding balance sheet with low debt. You know, I could have bigger problems than I focusing on actually all the trading situation to make sure we get every single sale we possibly can in a very tough trading environment. Mark's also been critical of the loss of some of your major brands. For example, Sass and Bayer. Now, whose decision was that? Look, I think, you know, in essence, as I explained about people maybe moving on, it's also good for brands to move on. So we have 3,000 brands. We've lost four in the last 18 months. One of those happens to be Sass and Bide. Sass and Bide actually was an acquisition. It wasn't certainly uh, a decision that was made on our behalf, but it was equally offered to us. My strategy is clear. I only know running department stores. I know them very well. Been in the industry for over 30 years. Um, I'm not, um, our strategy is not to acquire brands. We've replaced those brands with um, several new brands, all of which have more than replaced the Sass and Bide business. So all in all, we're really happy with our decision and where we're at today. There has been a lot of talk about how department stores have been losing market share to the specialty stores during this tough retail environment. How much have you seen of that? How much is that turning around, if at all? Look, I think um, it's probably fair to say it's a very small market in the Australian market. You know, we have 23, 24 million people. The pie is not growing from population. We don't have the benefit of inbound tourism. This, you know, with what the Australian dollar has done is it's driven most Australians outside of the country. Uh, our best department in the store is actually travel goods and a double digit growth. It gives you a real clear sense of what's happening. The AI dollar has also driven sales onshore, uh, offshore um, online. Uh, again, focusing on what, what, what we can focus on and you know, ultimately we, have, we will come out of this as a better business. You are spending a fair bit of money on rolling out new stores at the moment. On the other hand, you also have this multi-channel strategy that you've touted as well. Is this really the best use of money to be rolling out these new stores when many people think that online is your greatest threat? My best way to probably respond to that is that we only have 36 stores. 36 stores in very high value, high growth locations, the best shopping centres in the country. We think we've, you know, we've announced there's another four stores that we, we, we plan to open in the next horizon. There's, you know, there's certainly more stores we can open. Um, the beauty is at 40 stores, are we um, oversaturated? Absolutely not. So we believe we've got the right store portfolio. The multi-channel piece allows us to access regions and locations that a David Jones store business case would not stack up. So we believe that we're in the best position, not right now, but certainly in the future. I mean, look, look, in terms of the traditional shopper perhaps, but for example, could that money be better spent online, which it seems by all accounts, by all analysts, yeah. the online 
seller is your biggest threat right well, look, now. Again, I look to the US market for, for inspiration and even uh, Nordstrom that's doing 10% of their business online, which is a billion dollars worth of sales. For us, that would equate to $200 million worth of sales. What people do forget is that 90% of the business is still done in a store. Mm. Nothing removes the tactile and sensory experience you get in a store. And you can see today, people still want to engage with the brand, engage with the, the tactile nature, sensory nature of merchandise, but have the option to potentially buy it from their mobile phone. To either do the research online, buy in store, or research in store, buy online. And uh, obviously as a multifaceted or multi-channel business in the future, we'll have all those options in play. American Express, your credit card program. Tell us about the financial services division and how that is tracking because you go into a profit share arrangement after the 2013 financial year and there's many people predicting that you're not going to be able to sustain the current earnings. I've heard all those common comments. You know, the David Jones American Express Alliance is truly a, a unique uh, alliance. It is uh, highly profitable for, for David Jones and for American Express and we're updating the market next quarter, um, next year. So we'll have more information for you then. But you do have a couple of factors potentially weighing on that business. For example, tightening credit markets because of the situation in Europe could mean that that business suffers. Also the fact that a lot of the big banks, they're rolling out American Express cards as well. Look, I think um, it's probably fair to say we're seeing that today in our trading performance just generally. The, you know, our customers well educated, they're you know, generally well informed about what's happening globally and that's what's truly affecting our um, environment today. Uh, as for the credit card, people that sign up for our store card or the David Jones American Express card do that because they are engaged with the David Jones brand first and foremost and because they're regularly shopping with us and with that they get a swag of benefits. So our value proposition we believe is best in show.